So this round of Warzone is basically my best round of Warzone. And to be totally honest with you guys, and Warzone has been out for what? A week and a half now? Um, a win still eludes me. Uh, that's because most of the time I'm playing solo. So even when it wasn't available, when solos wasn't available, uh, I was still playing solo most of the time. And that makes it a lot more difficult to win because you don't have a buddy to help you. You don't have any friends whatsoever. But um, this round is probably the closest I've come to winning. And it was actually a really, really good round. So despite the fact that I didn't win, I thought I'd show it to you because I am I thought it was a really good round. But I'm so disappointed that I didn't win. I choked at the end, basically. And uh, I'm really disappointed that I did, but I'm also really happy that I had this round because it had a bit of everything in it, and it just made me smile whilst I was playing, so I thought I'd share it with you. When I dropped in there, I dropped in at a place that somebody got better gear than me straight away. I couldn't find a weapon other than the pistol that I had, so I had to go somewhere else. I uh, got lucky, picked up a scar, and these two kills came within the first couple of minutes of the round. Uh, and this is where it, it starts to get really, really good. And the rounds made me smile from, from this point onwards. At the moment in Warzone, the Car 98 is pretty much my favourite weapon. If that's because I'm playing Battlefield 5 a lot and it's a World War 2 game. But I just like the way that it looks in this game. And especially this Heart of the Beast or something. I think that's what this version of the weapon's called. But uh, yeah, Heart of the Beast. Uh, this is my first kill with it here. And I can't understand why the guy didn't move back from the top up there because like if if I knew that somebody was shooting at me with a sniper you're gonna feel that in the amount of damage that gets taken away from you and I don't know why he didn't drop back from the edge of the building because that would have just been the easiest thing to do there if he had a stepped away from the edge then he wouldn't have risked losing all of his gear but to be fair when you look at that gear it wasn't brilliant he had like a burst assault rifle and an MG but Still, if someone was shooting at you with a sniper rifle, wouldn't you want to step away from the edge of the bit? I can't understand why he didn't, but it meant I got my good first kill in with the Car 98. And I'm, as I said, I'm really enjoying using this weapon at the moment. I really, really like it in Warzone. I basically became a bit of a, a sniper tower camper for the next few minutes, but it paid off pretty well. And that's just because other people were hanging about. And I think we were all sort of hanging around in this downtown area because no one was really sure where the circle was going to go. That snipe made me feel so good when I landed that. I'm starting to get used to sort of how much you need to lead or how much drop there is in Warzone. And it's nowhere near as much as I thought it was going to be. And this guy on the other roof there, he spotted me. But um, we deal with him very, very swiftly in a second. Which... Um, Surprised me that that first shot didn't connect, but the second one did, so <laughs> it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I'm starting to get used to the drop and and the amount that you have to lead. And it's nowhere near as much as I thought it was going to be, coming from Battlefield, that sometimes the distances, they sort of start to play on you a little bit, so you have to pay attention. I noticed this guy down here, and when you're using a sniper rifle, obviously you only really want to be taking the shots that you know are going to land, so he was hiding himself pretty well, but eventually came out into the open and I could finish him off as well as you move through the downtown location especially during like the early parts of a match it can be really scary because you can hear shots going off all the time you're not 100% sure where those shots are coming from but as you can see top right there's about 40 people left in this match now so I felt a lot more comfortable moving around out in the open and I was going to go and pick up one of my loadouts, but I heard something like a shot in the background. I think it might have been an explosion, but um, I decided not to go for it. And at this point, I'm starting to realize that the zone is finally going to move out of downtown. So I have to start trying to figure out where I want to go. And it becomes a rather interesting part of the match, basically. Now, at this point here, I'm basically on the edge of downtown and I'm going to have to start moving somewhere else. And it's kind of the area that I thought there was going to be a little bit more action. And actually on the minimap there, you can see a vehicle on the other side of the road. But what happens next was kind of interesting. <laughs> that guy had clearly just come back from the gulag and uh, was going for some weapons on top of the, uh, of the bridge there. So I kind of felt sorry for killing him. But at the same time, it kind of lined up perfectly. And uh, I think I actually encounter a sniper battle going on here. There's a guy on the roof over there. I missed that shot, which would actually have been a really decent body shot. 
and then thinking about it, there was a guy on the roof and I was going to go after him, but in having, having fired that first shot already, I knew that that was going to draw attention to, to where I was. And um, this point of the match, things kind of took a little bit of a downturn, <laughs> but in a very, very interesting way. So I spotted this guy's loot over here and I thought, great. I need armor plates. And I was like, why the hell is the helicopter sitting there ominously behind me like some kind of Bond villain? And it turns out some guy was camping in a bush. And so I end up in the Gulag. So I got the Origin shotgun, which is honestly not my favorite weapon in the Gulag. But uh, And here I tried to throw equipment before I was allowed to. And uh, this guy wasn't particularly aggressive. So it was actually quite an easy Gulag win, to be honest. But uh, in coming back down, obviously, I've got no gear. Um, and I've got no way of knowing what gear I might get. And, um, well, again, my luck sort of came in here. <laughs> I had pretty bog-standard weapons, to be honest. But even at this point here, I could hear something in the background. And I could hear a truck. And you can now see that on the minimap. And I'm pretty convinced this guy must have seen me behind the rock here. Because he gets out instantly, and so, because I think it's in third person view, he must have been able to uh, to have seen me. And he had a self-drive kit, so I had to finish him off. But um, I got really lucky, because I thought, well, he's definitely going to beat me <laughs> in a gunfight. Turns out he didn't, and uh, he lost to uh, a machine gun. But um, that was a pretty lucky drop, because a lot of the time I found dropping down in Warzone, if you drop down back in late game, just before the Gulag closes and you happen to win, you're coming back down, the chances of you finding decent weapons at that point with the ring being so small are, are very, very slim. And at this point, again, another vehicle just turned up. And I decided to follow this one because obviously we've only got 20 people left. And I'm like, oh, well, I've got to finish people off here. And I was in a very, very open position. So these rocks here probably provided me uh, the best bit of cover I could actually get. But I think this guy actually ends up running off and I don't get this guy. That's right, yeah, he drives away. But then if you look at the minimap again, you'll spot another vehicle behind me. And that guy got out. And um, what's really interesting is if you listen to the audio after I kill this guy, it, it, it kind of caught me as something a little bit surprising. You. you see that little voice line he says there? I think I killed the guy that put me in the gulag. So it's kind of like one of those ones where you get a voice call out in Battlefield 5 when you kill somebody or one of your friends says, hey, you got promoted or something like that. I think that was contextual. So it knew that that guy had put me in the gulag and then I ended up avenging or getting revenge on him. And so I got a nice little voice line or whatever. I just thought that was a, an interesting little tidbit. Those loadout drops scared the hell out of me. And of course, you can't get them because they weren't highlighted on the map. And actually, I ended up just giving away my position to someone that was over there. And again, then I fired my weapon. So everyone around me is going to have seen that on the minimap because that's what Modern Warfare does. And um, yeah, so that's why I took refuge behind this rock here. No way I should have won that gunfight. Absolutely no way. How the hell did I win? I don't know. <laughs> but I managed to. And because I downed him, I knew he was going to go for the self-revive. And he was quite a distance away. And I was like, I cannot let that guy get back up. So uh, I had to take him out as quickly as I could. But he did give me a thermal sniper, which um, <laughs> which makes me quite happy. Now, at this point here, I'm running back to the body that's then going to be in the gas. Because I realized I have two not automatic, fully automatic weapons. I wanted the bolt action and a fully automatic weapon. And uh, I realized that I'd left my, my nice little... M4 behind, so I went back to pick that up. And this is the thermal sniper that's clearly his, because you can see red down the bottom there. But up until this point, I haven't even looked through the scope. One. Two. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I thought that was a really epic moment, because I just that's the first time I looked down the scope, and I was like, oh wow, two enemies that I can kill. So I went for it. And I think here I'm trying to spot a third player that I noticed. But unfortunately, this is where things start to get a bit hectic and I start making the wrong decisions because I get nervous <laughs> at the end of Battle Royales. And this is the first mistake I made. Why the hell didn't I ADS? Like, if I'd have ADS then, I would have taken that guy out so much quicker and might not have lost every single shield that I had. 
But um, that little gunfight sort of spells the end of my round because as you can see on the minimap, the gas is closing in on me. And then I make probably the biggest mistake I could make. I thought I was calling in a cluster strike right on that hill there, but as you can see, it says 200 meters. So it's completely missed the guy. Then I'm in the gas. Then I'm not in the gas and it's all over. And the reason I'm so annoyed <laughs> that I completely and utterly screwed that up is because when you watch the end of round here, like this guy could not have had the easiest end to the round at any other point in the past because his opponent is just, I think he's completely oblivious to what he's supposed to be doing. And so this guy already has a pretty good weapon that he's clearly called in from, from one of the crates. He's got a thermal scope on top of it which means he's going to be able to pick this guy out because the range at this point with the end circle is super low. Or it might be an IRMV scope. I'm not sure if it's a thermal one, but it's a nice scope that I actually want on some of my weapons. But you'll see now that this guy is such an easy win for him, which is why I'm so disappointed that I didn't get to this point. Like, I mean, how easy could this end of round be? Like, it's just running out in the open. It makes it so easy. But there we go. That's the end of... Probably my best round of Warzone so far. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll catch you all in the next one. Cause